Hi everyone. Now I am going to give you overview and importance of discrete mathematics for computer science and engineering students and allied branches. The discrete mathematics is having five units. Now I am going to give you the overview and importance of every unit. The very first unit is mathematical logic. So in this mathematical logic, there are two types of logics, first order logic and predicative logic. So this first order logic is about the statement and predicative logic is about the open statements. So this unit is going to improve the logical thinking of a student. If the student studies all these topics, then they will be able to solve any problems related to the mathematical logic. The next unit is sets and relations. In this sets and relations, the student is going to study about set operations, relations, and properties of the relations. Then he is going to study about the functions and types of the functions. Then he is going to study about the principle of inclusion and exclusion. And they are going to study about the pigeonhole principle. Now, this pigeonhole principle is very important because there is a subject called formal languages and automata theory. This is also called theory of computation. In this formal language and automata theory, there is one important lemma called pumping lemma. So if you want to prove the pumping lemma, then they must be having the knowledge about the pigeon hole principle, which means that the pumping lemma is proved by using pigeon hole principle. And then the principle of inclusion and exclusion. The principle of inclusion and exclusion is for counting numbers. The next unit is algorithms and mathematical induction. Now, if any problem is given to the students and ask them to write the coding, so before they are going to write the coding, it is better to have some basic idea about the problem. So the basic idea is nothing but that means they are going to write some algorithm for the problem. The algorithm is nothing but sequence of steps. So whatever problem we give for that one, first it is better to have the algorithm. Then based on the algorithm, then they are going to develop the coding. So after writing the algorithm, we have to analyze the algorithm. So to analyze the algorithm, we use asymptotic notations. So there are some asymptotic notations big O, big omega, big theta, small o, small omega. So this big O notation is going to give you the upper bound. This big omega notation is going to give the lower bound. And big theta is going to give you the average bound. And this small o is going to give you the tight upper bound. And small omega is going to give the tight lower bound. That means the algorithm is analyzed in terms of the time complexity and space complexity. This time complexity and space complexity will be found by using these asymptotic notices, which means that for every algorithm, we are going to find out the best case, worst case, and average case. For best case, we are going to use big omega notation. For worst case, we are going to use the big O notation. And for average case, we are going to use the theta notations, mathematical induction and strong induction and structural indexes. These are very helpful for the students to prove that the given statements are true for all natural numbers. The next unit is discrete probability and recurrence relations. So under this discrete probability, the student is going to study about the conditional probability, Bayes theorem, mean and variance. Under recurrence relations, the student is going to study how to solve the given recurrence relations. There are different types of recurrence relations. There are linear homogeneous recurrence relations, linear non-homogeneous recurrence relations. Those linear homogeneous and linear non-homogeneous recurrence relations can be solved by using some methods. Now the next unit is graph theory. So under this graph theory, 
the student is going to study about the directed graphs and undirected graphs. Under this graph theory, the student is going to study about the types of the graphs, tree traversals, graph traversals, spanning trees, minimum spanning trees, and shortest path problem. So this is mainly, this unit is very important for the computer science and engineering students aligned branches because there are so many applications of this graph theory. This graph theory will be used in a subject called data structures. Data structures, there are linear data structures and there are non-linear data structures. These trees and graphs will come under non-linear data structures. And they are going to study about the tree traversal techniques. There are three, tra three traversal techniques in order, pre-order and post-order. Similarly, there are two uh, graph traversal techniques, BFS, breadth of first search, DFS, depth of first search. This BFS and DFS are used to find out the spanning trees. Then there, there are some minimum spanning trees. There are two algorithms to find out the minimum spanning trees. These two algorithms are Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. And there are two more algorithms to find out the shortest path. So shortest path problems means if you take two endpoints, we are going to find out the shortest path between those two endpoints. For example, if you take the source vertex A and destination vertex B, in between there may be some other vertices. This is C, this is D, and this is E. So to reach from A to B, this is one path, this is one path, this is one path, and this is one path like this. There are some paths from reaching point A to that is vertex A to vertex B. But there will be only one minimum shortest path. So the minimum shortest path is going to give you the minimum distance from this source vertex A to destination vertex B. So there are two algorithms to find out the shortest paths between source vertex to destination vertex and between every pair of vertices. And the two algorithms are Dijkstra algorithm and floyd wassel's algorithm. These two algorithms are used to find out the shortest path between every two vertices are from source vertex to destination vertex. So now I have given the overview of the discrete mathematics. This discrete mathematics will be helpful for the students to perform well in these subjects. The first one is design and analysis of algorithm. In this design and analysis alpha of algorithms, there are some problem solving techniques. In those techniques, we are going to use these graphs and trees. Next, the next one is data structures. Data structures. In data structure also, we are going to use the graph theory concepts and tree concepts. The next subject is formal languages and automata theory. In this formal language and automata theory, we will be using the set operations, this pigeonhole principle and trees and graphs. The next one is DBMS, database management system. Compiler design. In compiler design also we are going to use these three concepts. So these are all the very important to, uh, subjects related to the uh, this discrete mathematics. That means if student is having good knowledge about discrete mathematics, they will be, then they will be performing well in all these subjects. Thank you.